For this question, we have been given two tasks. We are given some background information relating to two companies. We have Keswick, who has bought shares in Derwent on the 1st of June 20x5. And so therefore, we have a consolidated group accounts question. Task one asks us to use this information to complete the following financial statement. We've got revenue and cost of sales and profits. And so therefore, we are looking at a consolidated statement of profit and loss. Then for task two, we are then asked to decide, does the existence of any of these factors illustrate the existence of a parent subsidiary relationship? This is independent of the background information and task one. Firstly, let's look at the background information that relates to task one. We can see that Keswick acquired 80% of the share capital of Derwent on the 1st of June 20x5. Keswick owns more than 50% of the shares of Derwent and so is the parent company and Derwent is therefore the subsidiary company. In this situation, when we have a group, we will need to prepare consolidated financial statements. For many of the balances we prepare in consolidated accounts, we will be adding together Keswick's figures to Derwent's figures. However, there will be some adjustments that we need to make to these numbers. Looking at task one, we needed to use the information to complete the following financial statement. The first thing that we have to do is looking at the drop down menu, decide the title. We know we are looking at a consolidated statement of profit and loss. And for any profit and loss, we're looking at the performance for the year. And so therefore it's consolidated statement of profit and loss for the year ended 31st of May 20x6. The next step is to look at each of the individual balances line by line and decide what needs to be included. So first of all, for our revenue figure, we can see that the revenue for Keswick was 8.4 million. Added to this would be the revenue for Derwent, which amounts to 3.2 million. What we're also told in the information just underneath is that during the year, Keswick sold goods costing 1 million to Derwent for 1.5 million. Any intra-group purchases and sales made are not allowed to be included in consolidated accounts. Basically, we are not allowed to sell to ourselves. And so we will need to remove the sale of these goods from Keswick's figures. And so therefore, we are going to need to adjust and reduce these balances by 1.5 million. This will then give us the adjusted figures of 10 million 100,000. Looking at our drop down menu for our consolidated statement of profit and loss, the revenue figure to include will be the 8.4 million plus the 3.2 million and then deducting the intra group sale of 1.5 million. The next balance to prepare is our cost of sales figure. Once again, looking at the information provided, we can see that Keswick's cost of sales were 4.6 million. Adding on to this is Derwent's, which amounted to 1.7 million. Remembering that we had an intragroup sale, and so Keswick sold to Derwent, and so therefore Derwent purchased from Keswick. The purchase in Derwent's accounts needs to be removed. So we are going to remove the 1.5 million that they paid for those goods. In addition to this, we are also told at the end of the year on the 31st of May, 30% of these goods remained in Derwent's inventory. When Keswick made a sale to Derwent, they made a profit. They bought the goods for 1 million and then sold the goods for 1.5 million. They have therefore made a profit of 500,000. In the consolidated accounts, we are not allowed to recognize any unrealized profit. 30% of these goods are still in inventory and so therefore they are unrealized. We will therefore need to remove the profit that remains in inventory. So we need to take that 500,000 and multiply by 30% and so the unrealized profit in inventory is 150,000. This will be sitting in our closing inventory balance. And so therefore we will need to add this back to our cost of sales figure. So I'm going to also add the 150,000. And so the consolidated cost of sales figure would be 4,950,000. Looking at the drop down menu then for cost of sales, 
the correct option is going to be the second option. My next box is to calculate the gross profit. This is going to be based on my figures. So therefore, I've got my revenue figure of $10,100,000 and then taking off cost of sales, which is $4,950,000, will give me a gross profit of $5,150,000. And so I'll just type that into my box. The next box to calculate is for distribution costs. Looking at the figures that we've been given, distribution costs for Keswick are $1.5 million. Adding on the distribution costs for Derwent are 510,000. There are no further adjustments, and so therefore we have a figure of 2 million and 10,000. With this figure now calculated, I can include that in the box provided. The next one is for my admin expenses. Looking at the information that I have been given, I can see that Keswick has admin expenses of 700,000 and Derwent has 450,000. Therefore, the total admin expenses for the consolidated accounts are 1,150,000. With that calculated, I can then add that to my correct box. This will then give me a profit before tax figure, which comes to 1,990,000, adding that to my box. The next step is to add the tax figure. From the information provided, we can see that the tax for Keswick is 600,000 and the tax for Derwent is 140. And so therefore we have got 740, which needs to be included in the box provided. This then brings us down to the profit for the year. So taking my profit before tax, removing the tax, and therefore we are left with 1,250,000. Again, adding that to the box provided. Looking at the remaining information to complete for task one, we can see that we need to look at what's attributable to. Keswick only bought 80% of the shares in Derwent. And so when looking at this drop down menu, we are selecting the group profit for the year minus the non-controlling interest. The controlling interest is 80%. However, there is 20% of shares belonging to other parties. The final box to complete for task one is to actually calculate the non-controlling interest. In order to do this, we need to look at the information relating to Derwent. Derwent's profit for the year is 400,000. Remember that only 80% of the shares are owned by Keswick and so therefore not all of that profit belongs to the group. We therefore need to calculate the non-controlling interest. If we take our profit figure and multiply by the non-controlling interest percentage of 20%, this will give us 80,000. This therefore needs to be included in the final box like so. We can see from task one that we've got all of the elements correct and everything is completed. Let us now look at task two. So we needed to decide, does the existence of each of the following factors illustrate the existence of a parent subsidiary relationship? The first one is having greater than 50% of the equity shares being held by an investor. Greater than 50% does indicate the existence of a parent subsidiary relationship. Having significant influence does not indicate control and so therefore would not illustrate the existence of a parent subsidiary. Looking at 50% of all shares and debt being held by an investor, only having greater than 50% of equity shares would indicate a parent subsidiary and so the answer for this one is a no. The next one looks at greater than 50% of preference shares being held by an investor. Preference shares are non-equity. Ownership interest is characterised by ordinary shares and voting rights, and so therefore this would not indicate a parent subsidiary. The next one, looking at control, having control would indicate a parent subsidiary relationship. Non-controlling interest of 10% means that there would be a controlling interest of 90%, which would indicate a parent subsidiary. Having greater than 50% of preference shares and debt being held by an investor, once again, looks at non-equity shares and debt, and so therefore would not have an impact on a parent subsidiary. So the answer is no. The final one, looking at 100% of the equity shares being held by an investor, equity shares are an indicator of a parent subsidiary, and having 100% 
would mean that yes, we do have that relationship. Therefore, reviewing our answers, we can see in the top right hand side that we've got all of our marks and answered each of the elements for task two.